Here are some of my favorite books and stories for fourth through sixth graders who are studying the Middle Ages and Renaissance. Welcome to the Simply Charlotte Mason podcast. I'm Sonia Schaefer. Today, I want to share more of my top picks for living books on the Middle Ages and Renaissance. Now, if you want to know the exact dates that each book corresponds to, then follow the link in the show notes that will take you to the blog post. You'll find the dates there. The titles I'm sharing today are appropriate for fourth through sixth grade. At that age, the students should be transitioning to reading their school books for themselves, and all of these titles can be used as independent reads. However, one of them you will definitely want to read together if the book is new to you, and that's my first pick. This one is hands down my all-time favorite living book for this time period. Adam of the Road by Elizabeth Janet Gray. You can see how worn this book is. We have read it so many times. Now I'm recommending that you read this book together, not because it needs any parts edited or skipped out or anything that you need to change on the fly, any of those other reasons that you might read a book aloud to an older student. No, the reason I'm encouraging you to read that book together is because it's such a great book. You do not want to miss this one, trust me. Now, if you've already read it, then sure, assign it to your older student as an independent read. But if you've never read it before, make plans to enjoy it along with your student. You're gonna love it. Adam of the Road is a historical fiction that takes place near the end of the Middle Ages. Adam, whose father is a minstrel, has always been told that the road is a minstrel's home even though he may happen to be sleeping in a castle. Well, Adam discovers that truth when his father disappears and his beloved dog, Nick, is stolen. Adam soon finds himself traveling alone along those roads, searching the fairs and the market towns, looking for his father and his dog. Through his many adventures, you're going to get to know several medieval institutions and customs and occupations, such as training for knighthood, the nobility and the peasants, poachers and sheriffs, peddlers, plowmen, boys' schools, shrines, religious plays, alehouses, and much more. The book is appropriate for the whole family, and it has enough plot twists to keep everybody engrossed. Adam of the Road is sure to be a highlight of your Middle Ages study. Now, the next one is not a book, but it's a great living narration presented by a master storyteller. This one is King Arthur and His Knights. It's an audio recording by Jim Weiss. In the hour-long presentation, Jim unfolds the story of King Arthur and Queen Guinevere Sir Lancelot, and the Knights of the Round Table. It's an important legend to know about and to connect with the Middle Ages. There are other longer, more detailed books available about King Arthur, but I didn't want my middle school students spending a lot of time immersed in the magic of Merlin the Wizard and wading through all the deeds of all of the knights. So I chose this shorter, dramatic retelling instead. It's won several awards, and I think you and your children will enjoy it. The third one is a story in poetry form, The Pied Piper of Hamelin by Robert Browning. You can get a book of that poem, or you should be able to find it free online. I know Bartleby.com has a copy, and so does PoemHunter.com. The Pied Piper of Hamelin relates the legend of a town Hamlin, that was overrun by rats. The town leaders hire a man to play an entrancing tune on his pipe as he walks through the town in order to get rid of those pests. While he walks through playing that magic tune, all of the rats just follow him, and he leads them right out the city gate. Once the rats are gone, the piper comes back to collect his wages, but the townsfolk refuse to pay him. So in retaliation, 
the piper sweeps through the town again, this time entrancing the children who follow him out the city gate. That poem is going to give your middle school students experience with a longer story-length poetry, while also teaching a powerful lesson about keeping your promises. And it's set in the Middle Ages. My fourth top pick is a book from the Landmark series. Landmark books are popular nonfiction titles. They're written for about middle school age readers. Each one is written by an expert in his or her field, who's also an excellent writer. Landmarks are living books. Look for them. They cover significant events and people in both American history and world history. Many of them are out of print now, so look for them used. A few are still being published, and this one, The Vikings, by Elizabeth Janeway, is one that's still available. Here is a great description from the beginning of the book. There was land beyond the western seas. Of that, Leif Erikson was sure. His friend Bjarni had seen it with its rich green forests extending to sandy shores. To put his feet down on that distant land, which today we call North America, became Erikson's dream, for he was a child of the sea-roving Vikings. In this book, you're going to read a gripping account of high adventure, duels, and battles, and you'll get to know the daring Scandinavians who discovered Greenland and North America 500 years before Columbus. It's a great book. Those four top picks are the books that we schedule for grades four through six in the Simply Charlotte Mason curriculum. If you're studying the Middle Ages and Renaissance, those are the books that I would highly recommend. You can simply work your way through the list, or you can grab the daily lesson plans that are available. Those plans are going to outline what books to read when, and include teaching tips and end-of-term exam questions, as well as give the book recommendations for all the other grades. I'll leave a link to those daily plans in the show notes for you. Now let me give you three bonus picks. These are great books, too. If your fourth through sixth grader wants to learn more about the Middle Ages and Renaissance, then these would be great choices. First is The Door in the Wall by Marguerite D'Angeli. This book's plot has a somewhat similar feel to Adam of the Road, in that a boy is plunged into adventure, and following him through that adventure, you learn a lot about different aspects of life in the Middle Ages. In this one, Robin is the son of a nobleman. When he suddenly falls ill and he loses the use of his legs, the servants are all afraid it's the plague, and so they abandon him. But a group of kind monks rescues him and nurses him back to health. Now, Robin is impatient to get back to his training for knighthood, but his weak legs hinder that goal. In the end, Robin learns that there's more than one way to serve his king. The name of the book, A Door in the Wall, comes from something one of the monks told him. He said, Thou hast only to follow the wall far enough, and there will be a door in it. It's a great living idea. Now, this book is shorter than Adam of the Road. Let me show you. This one is about 120 pages, versus Adam of the Road is about 320 pages. So, Adam of the Road is going to have a few more plot twists, a little more adventure because it's longer. But both are exceptional historical fiction for this time period. And you can see both of them have a Newbery Medal on their covers. So I recommend both of those. All right, another bonus pick is The Merry Adventures of Robin Hood by Howard Pyle. We actually recommend this one as a family read-aloud. It's written in Old English, which can take a little getting used to, but our family found that by the end of the first chapter, we didn't even notice the wording differences anymore. The storyline and the writing are so good 
that the book drew us in, and we could follow the action very easily. I think a lot of that ease was because I was reading the text aloud. So all the children had to do was listen to that Old English. For some kids, having to read Old English for themselves and comprehend it at the same time might be a bit much. So I'm recommending this one as a read aloud. And it's a great read aloud. All about the brave and legendary outlaw known as Robin Hood, who proves himself the best in England with his bow and arrow. Let me give you a little taste of the language so you can judge for yourself. In merry England, in the time of old, when good King Henry II ruled the land, there lived within the green glades of Sherwood Forest, near Nottingham Town, a famous outlaw whose name was Robin Hood. No archer ever lived that could speed a gray goose shaft with such skill and cunning as his. Nor were there ever such yeomen as the seven score merry men that roamed with him through the greenwood shades. Right merrily they dwelt within the depths of Sherwood Forest. You'll read about breathtaking escapes, hilarious escapades, quick action, scheming villains, and great surprises, all set amid the pageantry of knights and maidens of the Middle Ages. You should be able to find this one online as well for free. Check Gutenberg.org or Google Books. It's a classic story written by an excellent author. All right, the last bonus pick, The World of Columbus and Sons by Genevieve Foster. Genevieve Foster was an expert at interweaving historical events from around the world that all happened during the same time period. And the world of Columbus and Sons is no exception. It really helps you form relations and make historical connections between countries. The book starts when Christopher Columbus was a boy in Italy. Now in that section, you're going to read about what else was happening around the world during those years. For example, young Isabella became heir to the crown and married Ferdinand. Prince Henry the Navigator sent explorers to search for a new route to India. Leonardo da Vinci began to study painting. And the War of the Roses began in England. All of those things were happening at the same time. Isn't that amazing? Each of those stories is told in a short chapter within that section. And then that pattern continues with the other sections in the book. They tell about what was happening around the world when Columbus was in Portugal and Spain, and then when Columbus was sailing from Spain, and finally when Columbus made his last voyage. And that last section includes chapters about Magellan starting on his voyage around the world, Michelangelo painting the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, and Martin Luther being denounced by Isabella's grandson, who became the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V. All of those fascinating intertwined stories are unfolded, along with those connecting points that make world history come alive. Genevieve Foster has written several books like this. The World of Columbus and Sons is the one that focuses on the Middle Ages, Renaissance, and Reformation. It's a classic. Now, I'd love to hear about some of your favorite living books for grades 4th through 6th, covering Middle Ages, Renaissance, and Reformation. Leave a comment and let's talk books. If you enjoyed this video, you can subscribe through iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, or use your favorite podcast app so you don't miss an episode. You can also subscribe to the audio version of this podcast or read the blog post on our website at simplycharlottemason.com. All of those links will be in the notes, along with links to the resources that I mentioned. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.